So just like we can run PCA on a four-dimensional iris dataset, we can also run it on our multi-dimensional movie rating dataset, where every dimension is a movie. We'll call this ratings matrix that has users as rows R. Just like it did with our iris dataset, PCA can boil this down to a much smaller number of dimensions that best describe the variance in the data. And often, the dimensions it finds correspond to features humans have learned to associate with movies as well. For example, how action-y is a movie? How romantic is it? How funny is it? Whatever it is about movies that causes individuals to rate them differently, PCA will find those latent features and extract them from the data. PCA doesn't know what they mean, but it finds them nonetheless. So we could ask PCA to distill things down to, say, three dimensions in this example, and it would boil our ratings down to three latent features it identified. PCA won't know what to call them, but let's say they end up being measures of each person's interest in action, sci-fi, and classic genres. So for example, we might think of Bob as being defined as 30% action, 50% sci-fi, and 20% classic in terms of his interests. Now take a look at the columns in this new matrix. Each column is a description of users that make up that feature. Action can be described as 30% of Bob plus 10% of Ted plus 30% of Anne. Let's call this matrix U. Its columns describe typical users for each latent feature we produced. Just like we can run PCA on our user ratings data to find profiles of typical kinds of users, we can flip things around and run PCA to find profiles of typical kinds of movies. If we rearrange our input data so that movies are rows and users are columns, it would look like this. We call this the transpose of the original ratings matrix, or RT for short. Now if we run PCA on that, it will identify the latent features again and describe each individual movie as some combination of them. Each column is now a description of some typical movie that exhibits some latent feature. Again, these have no inherent meaning, but in practice it might follow along movie genres lines. In reality though, it's more complex. Let's call this resulting matrix that describes typical movies M. So how do these matrices that describe typical users and typical movies help us to predict ratings? Well, it turns out that the typical movie matrix and the typical user matrix's transpose are both factors of the original rating matrix we started with. So if we have M and we have U, we can reconstruct R. And if R is missing some ratings, if we have M and U, we can fill in all of those blanks in R. That's why we call this matrix factorization. We describe our training data in terms of smaller matrices that are factors of the ratings we want to predict. There is also a sigma matrix in the middle here that we haven't talked about that we need. It's just a simple diagonal matrix that only serves to scale the values we end up with into the proper scale. You could just multiply that scaling matrix into M or U, and still think of R as just the product of two matrices if that makes it easier to wrap your head around it. So you could reconstruct R all at once by multiplying these factors together and get ratings for every combination of users and items. Once you have these factors though, you can also just predict a rating for a specific user and item by taking the dot product of the associated row in M for the user and the associated column in UT for the item. That's just how matrix multiplication works. Finally, we're going to tie it all together. A few times in this course, we've used a built-in recommender called SVD, and it's known to produce very accurate results. It was used widely during the Netflix prize amongst the leaders in the competition. SVD stands for Singular Value Decomposition. Know what Singular Value Decomposition does? It's a way of computing M, Sigma, and UT together all at once very efficiently. So all SVD is doing is running PCA on both the users and the items and giving us back the matrices we need that are factors of the ratings matrix we want. SVD is just a way to get all three of those factors in one shot. So you finally know what SVD is and what it's doing. But wait, how do we compute M and UT when our original matrix R is missing most of its values? You can't run PCA in a matrix where most of it is missing. It must be a complete matrix. You could just fill in the missing values with some sort of reasonable default values, like mean values of some sort, and this is what people did at first. But there's a better way. Remember, every rating can be described as the dot product of some row in the matrix M and some column in the matrix UT. So for example, if we want to predict Bob's ratings on The Empire Strikes Back, we can compute that as the dot product of the Bob row in M and The Empire Strikes Back column in UT.
So let's assume we have at least some known ratings for any given row and column in M and UT. We can treat this as a minimization problem, where we try to find the values of those complete rows and columns that best minimize the errors in the known ratings in R. There are a lot of machine learning techniques that can do that sort of a thing, such as stochastic gradient descent, or SGD for short. Basically, it just keeps iterating at some given learning rate until it arrives at a minimum error value. We could talk about SGD in more depth, but I think I've made your head hurt enough for now. And we'll return to SGD when we talk about neural networks because it comes into play there as well. And again, SGD is just one way to do it. Apache Spark, for example, uses a different technique called alternating least squares, or ALS. You might be confused here because all of a sudden we're talking about learning the values in matrices M and U and not computing them directly, which is what SVD does. And you're right to be confused. When we say we're doing SVD recommendations, it's not really SVD, because you can't do real SVD with missing data. It's an SVD-inspired algorithm that was invented for the Netflix prize, but it's not really pure SVD. The winner of the Netflix prize was a combination of a specific variant of SVD called SVD++, and another technique called restricted Boltzmann machines, but that's a story for another section. I realize this is all pretty tough to wrap your head around, and you might want to watch this section again to help it sink in. But the important points are this. You can think of all ratings for a set of users and items as a matrix R, and that matrix R can be factored into smaller matrices that describe general categories of users and items that can be multiplied together. A quick way to get those matrices is a technique called SVD, singular value decomposition. And once you have those factored matrices, you can predict the rating of any item by any user by just taking a dot product from each matrix. Techniques such as SGD, stochastic gradient descent, and ALS, alternating least squares, can be used to learn the best values of those factored matrices when you have missing data.